sometimes it may seem like the borderline and narcissist actually have empathy for you. They may, for instance, relate to your pain. They may apologize, making you believe they understood how much they hurt you. But any empathy they show you is actually most often a strategy to keep you stuck in a toxic relationship. Let me explain why. If you dated a borderline or a narcissist, it undoubtedly happened that they hurt you. This is inevitable in one way or another. They may, for instance, say something terrible about you, about a friend, about a family member. They may, for instance, criticize you in a very hurtful manner. It could be as simple and as trivial as something you wear, for instance, but doing it in a very harsh and evil way. And when they do that, your reaction is most likely going to be two. Either you're going to be angry or you're going to push them away and distance yourself from them. In the beginning, you might actually be able to ignore it. But after a bit of time, if you're in a relationship for the longer term, you're probably either going to get frustrated or you're probably going to try to emotionally distance yourself from them. And most often that's when they eventually, maybe after some time, realize that they did something wrong. And they will, in certain instances, come and apologize towards you, to you. And when someone apologizes, it is, to some degree, an act of empathy. It means that they think, you know, I realize I did or said something that hurt you, and I will hence stop doing that because I care and I love you. And that is basically empathy or compassion or whatever you want to call it. But the problem is that the second part does not really happen with the borderline and the narcissist, which is this, and I will stop doing that because I care and love you. Or maybe not even stop, but I will, won't repeat that ever again. BPDs and MPDs, in fact, will hurt you over and over and over and over again, you know, and you probably have experienced this yourselves, you know, where you had an incident, something happened, they hurt you in a certain way, you explained why that hurt you, they apologized, but then they'll do that again. And this might happen hundreds of times. So how can they have empathy if this is how they behave? So some of you might ask yourselves, you know, why do they apologize in the first place then? Well, they do because it has a specific purpose for them. It has a benefit because it has an intrinsic benefit towards them and they are selfish human beings. It's not because they don't apologize because of compassion. So for instance, if you're pulling away because you're hurt after a comment they, they made, then what will happen is that they will feel their abandonment issues being triggered. They will feel that, oh my gosh, my partner, my boyfriend, my girlfriend is distancing from me. I feel triggered. I need to do something to fix my trigger. I need to get closer to them, but I'm not able to do that. The only way I'm able to get close to them is if I apologize, if I show them that I understood my mistake. Even if in reality I haven't understood my mistake, it's a way for me to get closer to them and stop this unpleasant feeling of abandonment. And that's when they will apologize, you know, and they will say things that you want to hear as a way for them to get closer to you again. But if you look at why they're doing it, it's mostly, you know, 90% or however much you want to say, a way for them to stop feeling bad. If you didn't have that reaction of distancing yourself or being angry, they will probably never apologize because they will probably not even realize that they're hurting you. Because they only realize that they're hurting you the moment they feel hurt, the moment they feel that you're distancing yourself, the moment they feel that you know, you're criticizing them or whatever else it might be. So intrinsically, the BPD and the MPD doesn't feel bad for other people. They feel bad for themselves. And you know, this might be a defense mechanism due to childhood traumas or whatever else. You know, and there's probably a lot of justifications around this behavior, and it's probably to some degree not their fault. But if you're dating an adult, someone who's, you know, above 18, I would argue even above 16 or whatever it is, then you should have the expectations that they work on their issues and that they resolve their traumas and that they don't inflict it on other people. 
So what is the proof that they only feel bad for themselves? Well, it is the fact that they do the same mistakes, the fact that they hurt you over and over and over again. If they really cared about you, if they really loved you, they would stop. They would stop. There are no excuses, you know, they, they will not do it. If someone comes to me, a normal person, saying that I hurt them in a specific way, I would either argue that that's not the case or I would stop, you know, I will not keep repeating doing the same mistake. And in fact, if you, if the BPD and the MPD realizes that they're hurting their partners and they are not able to stop, then the caring and loving thing to do would actually be to stop the relationship, to, to, you know, break up with you and say, you know, I'm not ready for this relationship. I'm going to take the time that I need to fix myself because I don't want to see you being hurt. But of course, this never happens. You know, this is an idealistic <laughs> world where BPDs and MPDs are actually caring human beings. I wanted to also say something about, you know, biases that we have and the fact that we are very biased when it comes to nonviolent manipulations, emotional manipulations compared to violent manipulations. If we take the very stereotypical situation of a guy and it's usually a guy, but it's not always, that is violent towards their partner. Everyone recognizes that the best thing to do here is to leave. Everyone recognizes that the violent partner is a non-empathetic, non-compassionate person. If the partner of someone who is violent would ask for advice, everyone would say, you know, run. That is not love. They are not an empathetic person. Even if after they're violent, they buy gifts, they buy flowers, they ask for forgiveness, but when it comes to nonviolent abuse or manipulation, we are far more forgiving. <laughs> but the principle is the same. Someone who is physically violent or someone who is emotionally violent is non-empathetic. But we're much we're as a society, we're much it's much easier for us to see it when it is violent than, than when it is not non-violent. But the behaviors are exactly the same. The patterns are exactly the same. The violent person that the day after goes by a gift or asks for forgiveness is the same as someone who is emotionally violent. And the only course of action out of both situations, violent or non-violent, is that you should leave because this is a person that will not change, is a person that does not have compassion and empathy. Another thing that makes the empathy of a borderline and a narcissist even more fake is that it is very exaggerated. If there is, if a normal person hurts someone, normal is probably not the right word, but you get what I mean. If a normal person hurts someone else, they would apologize for the mistake. They would make sure not to make it again. And that's kind of it. You know, maybe they'll buy a gift, you know, once in a while uh, after several fights. But the BPD and the MPD can and often goes far beyond. After a serious fight, after they hurt you, after they see you distance yourself, they can do the most thoughtful of gestures. You know, they might, instead of buying flowers, they might make a handcrafted gift for you. They will pour their love into it or quote unquote supposed love. And it's dangerous because it leaves you thinking, oh, wow, if they're going so far, if they're investing so much money, time, love, doing something for me, for my forgiveness, surely they must understand their mistake. Surely they won't do it again. But you will quickly see how <laughs> they did not understand. And, uh, and as quickly as after a few hours, after you accepting their apology, after letting them in again into you know your love and emotions, a few hours might pass and they might you know do the same exact error that triggered this uh, first fight. So that's why we call it you know fake empathy, strategic empathy, tactical empathy, whatever you want to call it. So how do you protect yourself? And you know if this has happened to you, please share it in the comments. I'm. Uh, how fast after of an apology they made the same uh, uh, hurtful comments or, or arguments. Unfortunately, there's not too much you can do to protect yourself. It's a matter of experience, I think. In the start of dating someone who's borderline and narcissistic, it's very normal to fall for this several times. You know, it's very normal to accept an apology, believe the apology and, you know, get back to normal and then it happens again. And this might happen several times. And it's such an uncommon behavior to see someone who, you know, pours 
so much love into an apology that you actually believe it, you know? So it's only after this happens 10 times, after 20 times, 30 times, 100 times that you realize, okay, this is a pattern that's never going to be resolved. And hopefully you will learn that this is a pattern. Hopefully you will learn that this will never change. And if you stay long enough in it, you'll probably fall out of love. You know, you'll probably have much less enthusiasm about the relationship than you did in the start because, you know, you've gone through this cycle so many times that even if you still are in love, the, the emo emotions and enthusiasm goes away. And that's probably a good indication that that's a good time to leave.